Okay, so we're back in the fish room and in today's video we are going to be doing an update on some of the projects going on here in the room. Quite a lot of stuff has been happening as you would have seen if you've been watching my previous videos. We've been doing a lot of breeding. So in today's video I'm going to update you guys on all those fry. So the bettas, the danios and anything else that I've been breeding, even the neon tetras we're going to have a look at. I'm going to update you as well on some of the projects I've been doing behind the scenes that don't really get shown on YouTube and showing you some of the interesting stuff that's going on in the room. So we're not going to do a full tour. That would take a very long time. I'm just going to go from tank to tank showing you things that I find interesting and think that you guys will find interesting too. So to start off the video, firstly I want to show you the room. So here's the room. Over on this side of the room we have lots of grow out tanks. So these are all four foot tanks, four foot tanks. And then over on this side we have lots of two foot tanks. So I mainly use these for breeding. I'm currently in the process of finding a new fish room so some things aren't going as well as I'd like them to and I'm also preparing for you know moving things and different breeding projects and stuff like that for when I move rooms so I can't wait to tell you what's going on with that I'll wait for another video before I release everything there's going to be some really really exciting stuff and yeah I'm having a really hard time keeping my mouth shut because it's so exciting so anyways here's the room it's 16 meters squared so it's not a very big room it looks bigger on camera than it is in real life as you can see, we're just walking around. It's a little bit dirty, but that's how fish rooms get, especially really small ones. So you walk around here, we've got some bins at the front, and we've got some stuff going on here. So we've got some rainbow fish hatching out here. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. That's not too interesting. I'm still playing around with that. And if we come up the back, we have some boxes that I'm hatching eggs out in and things like that. And yeah, here's the room. So. I guess let's go start over on that better breeding tank. Okay, so we'll start off over here at this better grow out tank. In here we have some of the fry of the breeding project I did maybe a few weeks ago with some of the betters. So we're breeding betters in tubs and we were really successful. We actually got three of the four pairs that we were breeding to lay eggs and spawn. So this is one of three tanks that we have. In this tank we have the crown tails. So I actually crossed a crown tail with like this blue really interesting looking better. And we've got some of the fry in here. So in here we have about I'd say 200 to 250 different individual bedders and they're all about one centimeter in size. They're not really showing color yet but this is what they look like at this size. I'll also go around and record some of the other bedders so we've also got some koi's and we have some jet blacks. I'll let you guys go and watch that video and you can see all the combinations for yourself. All the bedders are doing really well. I just wanted to give you an update on firstly how big they are so they're not very big yet. I expect them to start really growing soon but they're all putting on size and they're all doing really well in these big tanks. I haven't had any die-offs from any of this breeding project. I haven't even seen a single dead better. So the method that I used to raise these fry up worked really well. Other than that, they're still all eating baby brine shrimp. I've stopped feeding them micro worms and I've stopped feeding them any egg yolk or anything like that. So they're all just eating baby brine shrimp at this stage. They'll start to eat flakes probably in about a week. But as you can see, not much color. I've noticed that all of these crown tails are much more pale than the koi's. The koi's have a mixture between a few pale ones and some darker ones, and then the jet blacks are all pretty much dark. As for quality, the best quality ones so far, or the strongest fry I've noticed, are the koi's and the crown tails. The jet blacks are a little bit more weak. I haven't had any die-offs, but the quality of fry just doesn't seem as good. Those are all the better fry, they're doing fantastic, and I can't wait to show you the colors that I start to get once they're a little bit bigger. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you was the Danio fry that we also bred in a previous video. So I spawned these guys in some styrofoam containers and that was actually really fun. I ended up with probably over a thousand of them and these are just some of the grow outs that we have in one of my tanks. We've got three other tanks with different grow outs. I'll also record some b-roll and show you all of those tanks because there is an astounding amount of fry in all of those tanks. Over here you're looking at the gold danios. So these are probably the biggest fry. There's probably about 150 of them in here. They're very darty and they're really hard to record. You can see them all darting around the screen there, but these are the gold danios, they're about a centimetre in size, and they're growing significantly faster than those bedders that we saw before. Every day I can notice that they're a little bit bigger. They're probably going to leave the fish room in about a month and a half. I'm just going to probably take them all to a wholesaler and just get rid of them because there's just that many. So these are the gold ones. In the other tanks I crossed some leopard danios and some gold danios, and we're going to see the results of those fry very soon. I have noticed that some of those fry are different colours, so we might get a variation in different types of danios between those crossbreeds. Other than that, all the danios are doing great. They're a really easy fish to breed and I'd highly recommend watching that video that I made previously. If you want to have a go at breeding them, 
all I needed was the styrofoam container and the danios and a few other little bits and bobs, but it was super easy and one of the most satisfying breeding projects I've done in a while because, well, we just made so many fries. So here are the danios, all doing really well and yeah. Okay, so in this tank you're gonna have to look a little bit harder because the fry in this tank are a little bit smaller and a bit tricky to see, but luckily they have really good colors, so they're gonna stand out a little bit easier. But in here we have the Neon Tetra Fry from my Neon Tetra breeding project. So I've got a few things to report back with these Neon Tetras. They haven't been difficult to raise, but I've really noticed there's a lot of problems with the quality of the fry. As you can see, there's a few of them that are having trouble swimming, and I think that's just genetics. I don't think that they've got any issues from what I did with the breeding because there's some really good quality ones in here. I'd say about 25% of the ones we breed have this swim bladder issue, and maybe it is something I did, I'm not too sure, but that's really disappointing. But there is some really good Neon Tetras in here. They're growing really quick as well. The Danios and the Neon Tetras are growing at the same speed, and they're like really rapid growers. Every morning I've been feeding these guys with baby brine shrimp, and every afternoon as well. And as you can see, their bellies just really fill up with this nice orange color, and they've been just growing so quick. And they actually look like little Neon Tetras now. So my plan with these Neons is to take the best quality ones out of this batch and breed these to get some more. And hopefully when we breed these, we get some really high quality babies and kind of develop our own line. I'm not really intending to breed these for wholesale. I just want to do it for a bit of fun. And I also want to throw these up the top of my Pleco tanks when I breed my Plecos. So in this tank as well, we also have some CPD fry, so some Celestial Pearl Danios. And I also just threw some Gold Laser Cori fry down the bottom as well. So this is just one of my standard grow out tanks. When I grow out things like Tetras or little baby Danios, like Celestial Pearl Danios, I always like to try and breed some Corys and throw them down the bottom as well. It's just a great way of utilizing one of these grow out tanks and maximizing the space that I have in this room. The Tetras along with the CPDs and the Corys go really well together when growing them out. You've just got to make sure you're feeding enough food in here to make sure that the Corys down the bottom get a bite to eat. But yeah, that's what's going on over here with the Neon Tetras. And I reckon in about a month and a half, these guys will be at breeding age and we'll be able to start spawning them again. So I'm super excited to show you this next project that we're going to be working on. So over here in this three foot tank, we obviously have some goldfish. So in the last week, I picked up three of these beautiful Aranda goldfish. There's two panda Arandas in here. And then there's like tricolor Aranda in here as well. So this one here would be the tricolor, that one there. And then there's a little panda there and another panda here. So we're gonna be breeding these three in a future breeding project, and I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to do that. It's not something I've done before, but it's something that I think is gonna be pretty easy. And these guys are in one of my cooler tanks. So they're actually in the front section of my fish room, and this tank would be about 20 degrees, so they're not in a tropical tank. And as you can see, it's just a bare bottom tank. There's nothing in here, not even any plants. The only thing I've added is some duckweed for them to eat, and that's about it. There's also a sponge filter up the back, and this tank's about 100 litres, so this is plenty of space for them to go. I also wanted to show you guys something really cool that I did with this tank. So, I showed this in a previous video, but as you can see, I've painted the sides of this tank, and I wanted to show you a little strategy that I did. It didn't turn out the way I thought it would, but it kind of created a really cool feature within this tank. Down the bottom, it might look to you like there's heaps of shadows, and what I did with this tank was I spray painted it with a granite finish, and then I went over the top of it with some black, and then I went over the top of the black with some gray, and it created this really cool like look in this tank. So I was going for a more of a stone look, but it's turned into a little bit of a shadow tank, and it still looks really cool in my opinion. It's a bit hard to record this tank because obviously the black creates a lot of glare, but other than that, you can see the goldfish pretty well when I put a big blanket up behind the tank. So you can see all the goldfish in here. I haven't come up with names for them yet. I don't want to get too attached in case I have to get rid of them soon because I might run out of space for these guys in the fish room. Goldfish take up a lot of space and I might have to move them on. So hopefully I can keep them if we get this new fish room underway soon. But my plan is just to breed them, keep some of the fry and move them on, which is kind of a little bit disappointing. But when you have limited space, that's the kind of stuff that happens. So before we leave these guys, I want to give them a quick feed. So I've just been feeding them some pellets and they go absolutely crazy for them. So here we go and you'll see them all go down here and eat them. So look at that, they just go absolutely nuts for these pellets, they're absolute little gutses. And funnily enough, this is the first time I've ever kept goldfish in my entire time keeping fish in this hobby. So I'm really excited to start doing this finally. I think fancy goldfish are a really good fish for me. 
and something that really suits my taste, especially because these guys look so cool. So here are my fancy goldfish and I can't wait to breed these guys in the near future. Okay, so in this next tank we have something that's pretty awesome and in here we have a huge batch of these beautiful blue black rams. I've talked about these heaps on my channel and I wanted to show you this tank firstly because you can see all the color. So we get quite a different variation of fish when we breed these two together. So the blue black ram is kind of a cross between a dark knight ram and a german blue ram. That's an easy way to put it. But when you breed the two together, you get a bunch of different types of fish. So I actually have these available on my website. When you breed the two blue black rams together, you get blue black rams, german blue rams, and dark knight rams. So you can see a few dark knights in amongst the mix. I get about 10 or 15% dark knight when I cross them together. And I get about 40% blue black and another 30% probably blue. This is a bigger batch and these guys are actually gonna be for sale very soon. But I just wanted to show you the tank because there's so much activity in here and the fish look fantastic. I also wanted to go ahead and give these guys a feed. So if we go up here, we'll give these guys a feed. You can see they go absolutely crazy. Just fish running around absolutely everywhere. I love feeding these guys. Look at them all go. So it's absolutely madness in here when we feed them, but you can see a few really good high quality blue blacks there. Some German blue rams as well as the dark knights. The dark knights are a little bit more scarce, but I just wanted to show you this tank because there's just so much color and so much action going on in here. And these guys turned out to be a really good batch and I wanted to show you them because they're available down below. So go ahead, check out my website if you're in Australia. You can go ahead and pick up a pair of them and breed them yourself. They're a pretty rare fish and they're coming a little bit more readily available, but they're still hard to come by. And these ones will be a lot better quality than the imported ones. Alrighty, so this next thing I wanted to show you is really, really cool. We're over here at my fry system. So this is just one of the breeder boxes that I use to raise up some of the fry in the fish room when needed. This system is used all over YouTube and people talk about it all the time and it works really well. In here I have a ton of different Pleco fry. So I have quite a few L333s that I pulled about a week ago. And I also have two L201 fry in here. So I had quite a large clutch of these guys and unfortunately the breeder box I was using unplugged overnight and I lost all of them. I'm still really, really upset about it, but this is the kind of stuff that happens when you're a breeder. Things like this happen and it's just really annoying, but I was so, so upset about it. But we still have two of them that survived and they're all doing really well. So I also in here have some albino longfin bristlenose. These are the first longfin bristlenose that I've had in the fish room or that I've bred in my whole entire life. They're pretty common everywhere in the world, but here in Australia, they're a little bit harder to come by. That being said, they're still pretty common. But the other day, I noticed a few of them were in the tank where I've been growing out the parents, and I pulled all the caves out of that tank, and I did find about 10 of them inside of a cave. So I added them to this breeder box, but it's just really good to know that those bristlenose are at breeding age, and I just wanted to show you what's going on in this box. So at this size, I just feed them heaps of baby brine shroom. There's lots of flow in this breeder box, and the temperature's really, really warm. So I expect them to grow pretty quick. A lot of people are gonna ask me, do you have some of them for sale? And the answer is no. I'll go around and record a few other tanks and show you I do have quite a few fry, but the thing is I wanna hold onto those fry for potential future breeding and grow them all out to adult size because I have a lot of plans to breed a lot more plecos as they're really in just high demand and I'd rather play the long game and just hold onto all the fry and release them a bit later than try and make a bit of money now because I don't really care about the money. If I cared about the money, I would have been doing a lot of different other breeding projects. So for the moment in time, we're just gonna leave these guys be and grow as many as we can out and hopefully get them breeding within the next two years. But yeah, here's the Pleco Fry. Okay, so I've shown you guys this tank before, but I wanted to show you it again because there's some really cool fish in here. So in this tank, we have some of the Dark Knight Rams that have been growing out. So like I said before, those blue black Rams, when they spawn, they release some of these Dark Knight Rams. I've been growing these guys out to cross breed them together because I want to breed Dark Knight to Dark Knight, which I haven't done. I know a few other breeders that have done it and they've gotten like 98% Dark Knights. So I obviously want to do that because they're really rare fish. But these have been a little bit more tricky to breed. They're definitely not a beginner fish by any stretch of the imagination. And I've had a lot of issues trying to breed them because they're just really not a strong fish. But these are the blackest ones I've ever seen in my entire life. Keep in mind, I haven't seen that many. I do have maybe one more pair available on my website, but. I think by the time this video is up, that pair will be gone. And they are pretty pricey because they're just that hard to breed. I actually did get a spawn this morning with another pair in another tank. Hopefully that spawn's gonna be fertilized. It did look like it would be fertilized, but 
we'll have to wait and see for a few days whether that spawn will actually hatch. But I just wanted to show you this tank with these beautiful dark knights in it. They're an absolutely stunning fish. They look really good in this tank. There's obviously a ton of algae in here and it doesn't really bother me too much because the dark knights don't mind it. And in my opinion, it looks kind of cool. So anyway, that's what's going on over here. And these are just some of the rams I'm trying to breed at the moment. So right next door to those dark knights is this tank. Now this isn't the prettiest tank. I've been really trying to leave this tank alone because in here we have some high risk fish in the fish room that might be carrying some diseases. So I've shown you guys this tank before and in here we have some electric blue rams. For those of you who don't know, these are very, very hard fish to find good quality stock with. A lot of the time they come in with heaps of problems. They're either really skinny, they have fish tuberculosis and there's something that I do really want to breed. I've been keeping these guys in this aquarium to grow out and hopefully spawn. I think they have spawned a few times, but they've just eaten the egg straight away and I'm getting a little bit frustrated about it. So I am looking for some high quality electric blue rams to hopefully breed in the future. But at the moment, these are the only ones I've got. I've been losing them really consistently. I've been medicating them as well, but just finding really good rams is so hard here in Australia. So. I just wanted to update you guys on this tank. I have definitely got males and females in here, but yeah, like I said, they're just not doing that great. And what I'm doing is just keeping them quarantined away from all the other fish in the fish room and growing them out. And hopefully I do get a spawn from them very soon. That's fertilized and then I can raise up that spawn and use those guys for brood stock. I'm feeding them heaps of live food, heaps of baby brine shrimp, trying to fatten them up as much as I can. And I'm just crossing my fingers that hopefully we get one spawn. But if we don't do that, I might have to reset this tank and buy some more fish until we eventually do get a fertilized spawn. Yeah, anyways, here are the electric blue rams. Yeah. Okay, so in this next tank, I wanted to show you one of my breeding tanks for my peppermint bristlenose. So for the last about year, I've been consistently breeding these guys and having quite a bit of success. So up in the back right hand corner, it's going to be a little bit tricky to see, but we actually have a male trapping a female and it looks like they're spawning. So. What I've been doing with these tanks is I've actually been going through a lot of my Pleco tanks and resetting them. So previously I had a big mat and filter up the back and I still have one in here. But what was happening was there was just a ton of waste being produced by those Plecos and the mat and filter needed to be changed out. So I've been going through and changing out and cleaning out all these tanks and resetting them up. And every now and then fry escapes so these tanks were just absolutely chock full of fry. So I took all those babies out and now there's just adults in here. My plan for a lot of these breeding tanks in the future is to actually take the mat and filters out and only put a sponge filter in here with some caves and maybe some driftwood. And what I want to do is only put RO water or rainwater in these tanks and try and keep the water as pristine as possible. So I want to take the mat and filter out because heaps of waste gets trapped behind that mat and filter and builds up over time. And it makes it really hard to clean these tanks. So I think mat and filters are really good for small grow out tanks or shrimp tanks because those tanks don't need to be changed very often. But for these Pleco breeding tanks, I think you really do need a sponge filter. And to create some flow, I'm gonna be buying some little power heads and I'm just gonna keep it like that. I can't wait to show you some of the future plans I have for these Pleco breeding tanks, but I'll wait for a future video before I really talk about my plans with this room with the Pleco breeding. But yeah, I've been having a lot of success. I've got quite a few fry coming through and there's lots of these guys available down below as well. Something that's funny is here in Australia, Plecos are very, very rare because we can't import them. These guys actually aren't that rare here, but it seems like overseas, a lot of people are having trouble finding these peppermint bristlenose, which is really funny because overseas, everything seems to be a lot more common than it is here in Australia. So that's just a funny little observation. It actually looks like I've missed a fry right up the front here. So you can see that little guy there. He somehow snuck through the system. But anyways, this is just one of my three Pleco breeding tanks for these peppermint bristlenose. And yeah, it's really good to see some spawning going on up the back. In this next tank, you can see I've got my small colony of these snowball shrimp. So here in Australia, these snowball shrimp are also a little bit trickier to find. They're pretty common anywhere else in the world, but here not a lot of people have them. I'm not saying they're that special, but they're something that I found pretty cool. And we're actually starting to see the benefits of having some of these snowball shrimp within this tank. So I've just dropped a few pellets up the front of this tank for these guys to eat, so that they all start to come out the front. But I finally got a few buried females. And the reason they're called snowball shrimp isn't because they're coloured like snowballs where they have like this nice white Christmas colour but because when the females are buried all their eggs look like little snowballs in their shrimp flaps. I always call them shrimp flaps, so I don't know the actual scientific name. In their little egg holding flaps. So we've got one of the pregnant females coming up the front now. I think there might be two of them in here that are pregnant but it's really really cool to see all those little snowballs in behind her belly. So. I've been having heaps of fun breeding shrimp. I also want to breed a lot of shrimp in the future and possibly use 
some of these tanks for more shrimp breeding because it's just so easy and so satisfying and these guys are so cute and they're really, really popular on my website. So I don't have any of these guys available at the moment. I should have some available soon. And I'm also making a specific video about these snowball shrimp in an up and coming video. Just setting this tank up and showing you how to start a little shrimp breeding tank and have success really quickly. So you can see that pregnant females coming up the front now. These snowball shrimp are so cool. So I think this tank's been up and running for about a month now and we finally got eggs. I think it normally takes about a month for the shrimp to start breeding. And I haven't had any losses of these shrimp luckily. So yeah, I'm really happy with this tank. Anyways guys, I think we're gonna wrap this video up here. So thank you so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, we didn't get to look at all the species in the room, but we got to look at quite a few projects and I hope you guys enjoyed having a look around the room and seeing some of the stuff that I find really interesting. Please leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.